Hi guys. Um, today we will have a presentation about our experience of using Percona and Maria and some other interesting stuff maybe for you, especially for the guys who like really hands-on and use databases actively, design the systems, uh, choose different solutions, compare them, and so on and so forth. So me is Alexander Andreev, I'm chief architect, uh, joined Acronis six years ago, and Mikhail Balayan, our chief database architect, who is very hands-on, very experienced, uh, I would say team. Uh, we have uh, five engineers in total, right, in database, plus we're happy to say that Monty agreed to join us last year, so uh, today we'll present uh, a bit more information about our current uh, problems and maybe future. So, the agenda. We will quickly review what is Acronis, just to make your impression like uh, what we are doing and what is our scale. Then uh, migration experience and then what we already contributing and going to contribute to open source world. Uh, of course, Maria DB, first of all. And then we will present future plans about new features which we want either to commit or help to accelerate maybe in, in MariaDB. Um, so first of all, our architecture. Acronis is actually initially was uh, just a backup company, uh, 25 years old, uh, and then moved to cloud approximately mm, 10 years old, I would say. And briefly, our architecture is the following. We have a lot of bunch of cloud services, software as a service like backup, for example, security, managed security, disaster recovery, remote management, remote access to machines. And then we have agents. So agents is actually uh, our main worker staff, workers. They deploy it on millions of machines across the globe. And then they talk to the cloud and use, of course, databases to store different uh, metrics, statuses, and so on and so forth. And also they replicate data, uh, actually do backup and re uh, restore from the cloud storage, which is also, by the way, developed by Acronis. So we, we have our own infrastructure for everything. And of course, databases we use, we, we host them, we operate them globally. and. Um, the number of data centers is growing, and currently we would say that uh, that's our scale. So we have more than 50 data centers globally, and we have, you, you can see, 2,000 database instances running. So running, operated, backed up, monitored, secured, uh, optimized by us. So we, we don't use any public clouds for databases, we do it uh, ourselves. 5,000 logical databases, meaning that single uh, physical instance might, might have different logical ones. And by the way, that's why uh, catalog will be beneficial for us. We will talk about it a bit later. Then, mm, almost half a million of tables, uh, 50 terabytes of data. You can see, for example, 10 billion of transactions per day and uh, 5,000 microservices as clients of databases. So they talk to databases daily, like every second, all together, and we return one million of rows to the clients every second. And uh, in addition to that, we have also testing environment, which is even much, much higher. So we have 50, uh, 500 test clouds deployed on our R&D side. So it means uh, almost every engineer has its own small version of the cloud and it can develop the software and say, test uh, how it works, uh, test new features, and see how, how database uh, actually performs, for example, and so on and so forth. So again, the number of uh, databases is even higher, so altogether it's a lot. So for us it means the following. We are very zero tolerant to any kind of problems. So we want to have as stable environment as possible. Everything is fully automated. Single button to deploy everything, to upgrade, to migrate, etc. Uh, because otherwise on our scale every problem which you need to solve manually is nightmare. <coughs> so it's completely unscalable. Now, a uh, little bit more questions. 
So that's uh, the database. We have multiple databases in production. So it's not just Kirkona or Maria. We also have Postgres. We also have uh, Cassandra. We also considering ClickHouse maybe at some point. So it's it's not just single vendor. But the core part, the platform part, the core part of the system, uh, we're using Kirkona, Galera 3, uh, HA Proxy, and we will briefly uh, explain how it works in our case. And that's the main, I would say, uh, point where we decided that it's time to change it because end of life is happened in the last year. So we had to decide what to do with that. Also, we were happy, as I mentioned already, uh, to see that Monty decided, agreed to join us. That's very beneficial for us because now we, um, we can do more with our database there. And just to note, we didn't have any Percona uh, services. So, but we still love it. We will show it quickly. Why we love Percona infrastructure, especially Percona uh, management and monitoring and management solution. And we wanted to keep it uh, in our ecosystem. So again, thank you, Monty, for joining. Uh, so altogether, we decided the following uh, objectives for our migration project. So first of all, we want to uh, migrate Percona binary to Maria with slowest possible downtime, like few minutes downtime. That's critical, obviously, because of our scale. It's uh, a lot of, say, traffic. So every kind of hour of downtime is very critical for us. Then uh, we wanted to keep environment because, again, a lot of automation around uh, all the systems. So Galera, HA Proxy, uh, again, Percona, Backup, all the automation scripts, we wanted to keep them. Uh, then uh, I liked yesterday's uh, slide about the migration where it was a message like uh, that uh, after migration, it might have a different performance um, issues, which is hard to predict. So maybe it, it was one of the scary things, right? When you when you plan migration and you see functionally it works, but you never know, like, will all my scenario be performing as it was before, right? So we were pretty, I would say, paranoid uh, in this uh, aspect. And uh, specifically for this project, uh, and for, for some other similar kind of um, challenges, we developed uh, the benchmark, which uh, covered a uh, majority of our acronym scenarios in a sy synthetic kind of benchmark. So now we can run it uh, uh, in a testing environment to see what we can expect in our real production after migration. And the number four, with help of Monty and community, we are planning to contribute back to Maria and get new features for us to, to be more efficient in production. And the project timeline is uh, like six months project. It's almost done. We're just polishing final QA, I would say, tasks, final, uh, final minor issues. But uh, in general, it works. We already tested it on a pretty large environment in our uh, testing lab. So we can say that 95% ready. So just a uh, simple example why we like Percona management monitoring. So, Michael, maybe I will pass the word to you. That's one of the kind of uh, screen uh, highlighting why we, we love it and why we actually automate a lot of things and then, say, enable different uh, alerting, automated alerts on top of different metrics. So, Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael. Thanks, Alex. So, uh, so first, uh, with that complexity of the infrastructure, with, with dozens of data centers and the thousands of instances, database instances, uh, we want to have as less operations cost as possible and as fast troubleshooting as possible. And Percona management and monitoring is a key component in, in help that helps us achieve it. For example, this one is a screenshot of Query analytics uh, page, which uh, <coughs> I consider is a killer feature of PMM, uh, because it helps us to see to see the queries, uh, to filter by them by the components. So we have many databases there. We can check which which component uh, produces the the highest load, uh, where the database spends a lot of most, the most time, and so on. Uh, we can get details on each query. Uh, 
And even there is a new feature that was added recently uh, at column, so we can even check not only the data that is shown here, but we can add any column that, that of course is available in a slow log. For example, temp space usage, and uh, we can sort the queries by temp space and find like who is who is consuming the most temp space in the queries. Um, so yeah, some details about our topology and how uh, we do our migration. So here we can, you can see how it works. Uh, on the top, it is services. Then we have a proxy that routes the traffic and the connections to the node uh, that processes the queries. We have Galera that uh, that gives us availability uh, and. Uh, the well around there is there are a lot of deployment script that Alex was talking about everything that automated deployment everything uh, even like restart of the layer nodes because there are some that some manual steps are required so everything is with the playbooks then GMN and backups backups are also automated uh, the goal was do we have notes there what is next slide so uh, the goal was to keep, because we have different data centers uh, with a different scale, some of them are like few gigabytes, uh, few gigabytes, some of them terabytes. Uh, so the idea was, the goal was uh, to do the migration not depending on the database size. size. Uh, and, and that was the process. So I will not stop on in details, but there is actually step by step guide how I how I achieved it. Uh, Monty, Monty helped us a lot in this. Uh, also later I will tell uh, about what problems did we have and how did we solve them. So generally, what we achieved is really uh, regardless of like terabytes or gigabytes, the time for switching from Percona to MariaDB was the same. It was just a couple of minutes. Yeah, and here you can see that all the surroundings remain the same. We changed only the binaries, actually. So Percona with its Galera 3 was changed to MariaDB with Galera 4. That's it. Yeah, now, uh, now actually what what we found during this migration and what was contributed to MariaDB back, this is, uh, let's start with the partition tables. Before, there there were some manual steps required. When we gave the feedback to Monty, uh, he quickly prepared a fix, actually. So now it is implemented. Uh, and shared with the community. Uh, no manual steps are needed now, and uh, MariaDB, no, uh, <coughs> MySQL partition format is now automatically converted to, uh, to MariaDB supported one. Uh, the next is support for so called zoo format uh, of time, where we have at the end, we have Z letter. And before we had, and it is actively used in uh, in our projects. That was discovered when we tested switch. Uh, so now this format is supported, and actually, yeah. So it was much easier to fix uh, in a database side than to fix all the clients we had, dozens of them. So now we don't have the problem, and community shouldn't have. Also. Uh, the next is uh, we have a lot of warnings that were ignored before, but it, that is quite useful to see the warnings and to get then to give some feedback to developers. Hey guys, your application is doing something wrong. Please fix. It's not critical, of course, it works, but like, take a note of this. Before it was hidden, unless developer would read the show, show warnings, they didn't. So now we, we, we have a key, how to enable it. So we have this configuration key. We can, and we can, uh, in, a, in an error log, we can see the warnings. Also, then to allow them to share. Uh, 
and uh, more in most of these were related before um, before it was already said by Peter that we have in Mariki there are a lot of that we we'll ask to add even more. Uh, I, there are a bunch of them. I would maybe focus on a few. For example, pages access and pages read. That is like how effective is the query. Uh, and, and pages read time and engine time. So this is like how much time the uh, MariaDB spent on, on doing something itself or on uh, requesting data equating the data from, uh, from the engine. And also page read time, so how much time the engine spent it on, a, on a reading data. Uh, Otto, can you give a quick comment? So, uh, yeah. uh, Tarkona had a step just like in the DB. I implemented a general interface that can be trivially adapted to all engines, but I, well, yeah, we haven't adapted before in the DB so far. But uh, I think that's for uh, area or of the it should be easy. Cool. Yeah, and actually it was inspired by a feature that, has, that Percona has. Now we have it also in MariaDB. And we already created a ticket uh, to Percona team to add this to PMM. So this collaboration is working. They already accepted it. Um, also, there is a nice feature in both in, in, in Percona and in MariaDB to rate the amount of, like not to log every query to a slow log, but you can log, let's say in this example, every 10 query. We have a higher threshold, we, have, we log every 100 query. Uh, because to log everything, that would, be, would take a lot of space. Not to log uh, slow, not to log slow, uh, fast queries, wouldn't give us a full picture of what is happening in a database. <clears throat> so that's why we use that. So we use we log every query, but just I mean every query not related to their execution time, but we log every ten squ uh, hundred query. Uh, at the same time, it would it would be useful to log um, the slow slow queries to log unconditionally. Just every query that is slower, let's say hundred milliseconds, we should log. So this is yeah, this is uh, the expected feature should be implemented in 11.7. So it's actually implemented in a uh, in order to release or already, but it will be the 11.7 in the next long term release. So that's why we have it on the slide. Yeah. yeah. Another feature is uh, limiting the bin log size. Uh, it's not to hit the the space. I'll not stop here in the details, I think it's obvious. Um, another is extending, uh, even adding even more statistics to user stuff. So we, we would have now um, how effectively is index used, how effectively is table used, do we have full scans mostly, or do we have index scans? And so, so based on this data, now we can analyze how good a query is actually in. If we find some problems, then we can again come to developers, not waiting for some issues to happen in production. So all this helps to proactively react on the problems that are even doesn't exist. Uh, and yeah, temp usage uh, quotas and monitoring. We're also waiting for this feature. So it allows now uh, it allows to limit the. Uh, Usage uh, space used by a temp uh, per user <coughs> and total space. It is already implemented in our test branch. Uh, but later we'll tell more on this because we there is space to to, to improve. Um, yeah. Now about credibility into Percona. Uh, we. We, we, so we work with MariaDB on the one side, we work with uh, Percona on the other side because we use the tools as I, as I showed before and we are happy with it. And even so on, the, on the top you see, uh, on top right, we found some bugs in Percona 
that were accepted by the team. Then we found uh, that explain plan doesn't work. And for that, even one of our, of our guys, Marco, was recognized as a contributor here on our official page. So yeah, just he, he found and then in, in a few iterations, we were able to, to fix it with the Bergona team. Yeah, and now you can see that uh, for each query, you can see the ex ex explain plan, execution plan of each query. Um, ah, yeah, so another, another feature, not feature, another tool that we are sharing with the, open, um, with the community is our performance uh, tool and more details will be given by Alex. Yeah. Thank you, Mikhail. So I would like again to thank you, to say, say a big thank you to Monty, of course, and to the whole our team, especially the guys who are, who are implementing all this automation, Dimitar and Alexander. So if you can see this demo, you will recognize yourself. And the whole database team, of course. And now, yeah, we will talk a bit uh, our sense of multi-tenancy and what is the uh, problem, at least for our type of the companies, where you have millions of agents, hundreds of thousands of different tenants, and a lot of databases, and what's, what's the main um, one of the uh, type of problems with performance. Uh, so first of all, again, we have a lot of microservices and uh, every microservice stores data in single database from different customers. So for example, in shared hosting business, you have like single customer goes and buys, say for example, hosting and uh, it, he or she deploys, say, cPanel or not cPanel, say WordPress or maybe Drupal or Joomla, whatever kind of CMS system. And the system creates all the uh, database tables in the, in the database. And so all the tenants are unique kind of users. In our case, it's, it's a bit different. So in our case, tenants actually are services. So single service have data from all the customers and as a service, and other tables with another type of data. And um, the idea was, okay, because we have different services and everybody works with different tenants and everybody need to isolate data from different customers, right in SQL okay. queries, uh, we understood that, okay, it's uh, in general, it's very hard to predict. For example, if you run TPCC benchmark, it will show you some performance numbers, but we have no idea what will be, uh, what will happen in our case with all these filters in, C in uh, SQL queries. So the idea was to collect all the typical patterns from our mostly loaded services into this benchmark and then uh, support the different like simple to higher complexity scenarios like from very synthetic to more and more, more and more realistic and then uh, use it to compare different system solutions, environment, configuration, replication versus single database and so on and so forth. And then make it open source to allow to, say, report a ticket. For example, we tell Nikita, look, this is our pattern, this is the source, this is the version we use, maybe that's the ticket and you can reproduce the result. And uh, we developed this benchmark, it's just 10,000 lines of code in Golem, uh, but again, it covers a lot of, like, 80% 80 80 of our dreams so far, already there. So again, a little bit about uh, complexity. Maybe this is the most complicated slide in today's presentation. So for Acronis, it's critical to have a uh, hierarchical multi-tenancy domain model. It means we have distributors, partners, then they have some folders, customers, and again, every service stores data in single database. So it's kind of rows of data with, say, tenant ID or, say, maybe parent tenant ID associated to every single piece of data. And uh, in our uh, access check model, we allow customers to see only its data, but say partner might see some of the data for all the customers. So it's kind of tree, and you need to fetch data from all the children elements. And uh, another second part of this access check is that services 
see all the data from all the customers. For example, backup service need to manage backups and it has access to see all the backup specific part of the data for all the customers. And intersection of these two kind of uh, areas is a resulting scope. For example, if a customer goes to configure backup service, the backup service plus customer access check gives you uh, available piece of data in the database. So it means all the queries we have always have this access check. So it always either join or where and then conditions. Uh, and we have uh, a bunch of the services, so it's not like one to say, it's maybe a couple dozens of services with isolated uh, access. So, uh, the benchmark. Uh, again, as I mentioned, we use synthetic tables just to be a very, uh, to have a very simple tool to understand, okay, the simple table, light table, two columns, zero indexes, does it perform well in my environment or not? More complicated, more complicated than the realistic ones. Then we have a set of predefined flavors of the queries, for example, insert, select, update, blah, blah, blah. And for example, for insert, you can have different flavors. Begin, multiple insert commit. You can have insert into values and then enumerate your values. You can do the same what we see in stored uh, uh, a procedure or um, even uh, try copy like in Postgres, in Oracle, right? Copy also supported. So copy operation to uh, upload a bunch of data without any kind of uh, insert uh, type queries. Is this similar to load data in your file or for, from where is the copy? From, uh, from memory, from the, uh, from the client, directly from the connection. So it's not from, from file to table, it's from client to that, that, that's uh, what we have in Marine, we learn data in a file where we ask it from the client. Yeah. Something similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then select, for example, very simple select one, just to test how connectivity works. And then more complicated, for example, select with, so with some condition, with some condition and tenant condition, some condition and tenant and service filters. So that's the idea of like more, more, more complicated queries. Then we have different patterns, insert and they select, join, a large block insert, sequence, a custom query, and then we have uh, multiple parameters like configure test duration, number of queries, uh, concurrency, a lot of things, and we support now Percona, Marine, MySQL, Postgres, uh, MySQL, uh, SQLite, and Cassandra and GitHub. And that's how it works. So I just run my benchmark with my connection string and saying, okay, let's insert some data into the light table and do it uh, 100,000 times with concurrency 16. The benchmark can recognize the database and it can check the parameters to ensure that it's configured properly. For example, Monty recommended us to look at some <coughs> parameters and say, if it doesn't configure this way, probably your benchmark is not very uh, good because you haven't prepared your database well for such kind of uh, scenario. Uh, I have to say that for Maria we check so far five parameters, for Postgres we have to check like 20, uh, 20 or so, because it has much more granular configuration, which is good thing, sometimes, sometimes bad thing, because you have to prepare it well for your pattern. <coughs> okay, and then this benchmark we just saw, okay, uh, it's now 7,000 rows per second, and if we run it, say with uh, we now insert into the heavy table, and now we see 10,000. And we know that light table is just two columns, heavy table is 32 or so columns and 16 indexes, and we say, okay, good. For insert operation, the number of columns doesn't matter much. So when we design the system, we know, okay, it's not a problem to have many columns in your query, but maybe what's the problem is how you insert data. Maybe if you insert it, uh, it's about insert will be one performance, if you sort of by a single connection, uh, one by one, probably it can be complicated and, and performance can be much worse. Um, then we have an integration with uh, one of the open source projects to <coughs> draw the charts. In this particular chart, we just showed this as an example, it's how your query degrades with the uh, number of lines, rows in database. So we say, okay, good, Percona 5, 6, 5, 7, and 10, 11, Performs equally well in this scenario, 
and we say, okay, probably it means that this part of the engine was not actually changed during these years. Exactly this, this scenario. Of course, some others would show, for example, old database like degrade like this, and new database performs much well, much better. And again, this tool is used to, like Swiss Army Knife, you can compare many different hypotheses or many different scenarios using it, and very quickly. I probably will show uh, right now a few, few examples. So again, a brief idea. You want to build some solution on top of database. You approximately uh, recognize your pattern, and you say, OK, I want to design a system where I want to insert, say, 100,000 of events per second to some storage. So what kind of storage should I use? Maria, maybe ClickHouse, maybe Elastic, maybe Postgres. And how do I choose it? How do I ensure that it will uh, perform? And uh, what exactly the query pattern I should use? So we're saying, OK, <coughs> choose parameter you want to explore. Uh, engines, vendors, database versions, uh, different hardware, like different hardware drives. For example, RAID 0 versus RAID 10, or say, uh, VM with uh, 16 CPUs or VM with 4 CPUs. And uh, then our engineers, which is uh, which are actually not necessary from the database team, can play with this tool and explore and say, okay, uh, we are okay if you give us, say, Maria instance, because it will be okay to handle exactly our log. So engineers can get this knowledge from the database team and can uh, explore their solution before it goes to production. So let me quickly maybe show a few examples. I cannot hear that uh, in, in, in Ukraine it's not only engineers, but even uh, QA teams uh, QA, uh, use this tool to compare, to, to give some feedback <coughs> to charts and say like if we have degradation or not. Yeah, uh, so I hope you see my screen. So what I can do first say, uh, I want to check what my tool is actually doing. So I'm running it for the single query and concurrency one and in verbose mode, I will be able to see uh, what's going on. The tool will just insert data. And if I do it say 10 times, I will see the tool will, uh, Oh, sorry. 10 times the tool will insert 10 lines of code, uh, 10 rows, <coughs> and then I can use different uh, debug mode to see duration and exact parameters, so many kind of uh, debugging stuff. Then, for example, I decided, okay, uh, that's exactly the pattern I want to test, uh, and then I want to, for example, check how my performance depends on uh, concurrency level. So I'm inserting data into the medium table, and I'm getting 7,000 uh, inserts per second. But for example, I need to get 100,000. So does it mean I need to switch from Maria to, say, ClickHouse or not? So how do I decide? And we're saying, OK, but try to play with different parameters. For example, uh, use more, <coughs> use, use better concurrency. <coughs> so now I'm running the same test with 16 parallel workers and it gets already 7,000, 17,000 versus 7. So good boost, but not that efficient. I still need more. So do I need to go to ClickHouse or stay here? Uh, we're saying, okay, you can also uh, play with different batch, uh, batching of the inserts. So not, not to do insert in single transaction, but keep multiple insert operation within single transaction. And so, Okay, how much it will get after that? Uh, here I do the uh, insert into the medium table with multiple values in single trans transaction, and uh, by 10 operations in single transaction. And I'm already getting uh, 100,000 effectively inserted rows per second. It means it's okay already for me because I started with seven, now I can get from the same solution, I can get 100. And if I, for example, increase my batch to 100 of uh, inserted rows per transaction, I'm getting 125. So now it's good. 
Is it possible for you to turn off performance schema because we just had some discussions yesterday? What happens? <laughs> Wait, the batch is multiplied by 10, but the rate grew just 25%, right? Yes. Uh, then, if we look more uh, just uh, after this benchmark, we have other tools which, which are not open source, but they are publicly available in, in the community. Uh, so, for example, uh, when we debug it in real, before going to say real production, we also debug what happens on Linux kernel side. So, for example, what is the effective page size going to hard drives? And we know that we can configure it in the in the uh, MariaDB configuration options, right? In at least an area engine, we can configure the page size, right? Yeah, and so then we can say, okay, for this for this specific pattern, probably we need to tune Maria and increase the page size, and it will be even better performance. So for this service, it will be special instance of Maria with special configuration. So that's uh, th that's the idea, and that's how we research and explore databases, and then we come say to Monty and saying, okay, how can you help us to get say even more? It's already good, but what if we want? One million of inserts per, per second. Remove performance. <laughs> <laughs> remove performance and you remove sync and so on. So yeah, actually, I would like you at some point to give me some information. But what's the impact of performance schema if you run all the tests? Yeah, that would help us a lot. You have a question? No. Um, so back to presentation uh, about future plans. So Michael will tell about the top. 10 other items we want to contribute soon, right? Yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah, not only future plans, but also our interest. Uh, I would say it's future plans of MariaDB, hopefully. Uh, the first is, oh, was already, oh, no, this one, no. So it is a uh, non-working backup. We all know that there is this problem in a community edition. It was for a long time. And uh, hopefully it will be resolved. Yeah. So, and we'll have a backup that is not blocked without blo 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 Then uh, we plan to extend uh, error messages with some usable data because now we read the error messages. If, let's say, say there was some query terminated because of key violation or whatever, or hitting a sort, sort space hit template. Uh, but no information like what database, what tables were involved, what user. So this would be very useful, and we plan to add it. Yeah, so that's already added by PLC, but it's uh, partly because of Acronis uh, requested. Cool. Yeah. And then as, as, as before, I, uh, I was saying that uh, we the 10 usage quotas uh, are going to be implemented, uh, but they cover mostly uh, the queries themselves, you know, select queries. Uh, now we want to you know, improve more and cover also the um, operations, create index, for example, and um, the tables, and also to find a solution for explicitly created uh, temporary tables. Because now they are they are created in so I will not go into details of implementation, but never mind. So they will also be we will not have we shouldn't have issues with hitting the temp space limit because of the temp, uh, temporary tables. Uh, bad monitoring capabilities. I showed a few metrics that were added already. Uh, we will add even more. We plan to add more. Catalogs were already, already highlighted yesterday. Uh, we, as Alex said, we're waiting for this because we have the need for it. Uh, we have multiple services, and it makes sense to split them. Uh, Building an analog of PT online scheme change. Nikita, Nikita shared details on that. Um, also, we, as we use Galera, so we found that when we drop some huge tables, we would have some freeze or a cluster. <laughs> um, we had a hope that in Galera 4, 
was a fix, but no, so uh, waiting for it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm working on Acronis' uh, behalf to get a bit of a galera to fix it. Then another another feature that we want to have is uh, how to create a foreign key without the downtime. Uh, that is the case when we have a big tables and when you create a foreign key, then you should verify that all rows satisfy the foreign keys. You have now uh, an option like to disable a foreign key check, but it will be better not to disable because it means we need to tell developers like. You have this trick to disable foreign key, then what if they forget it, and so on. So, better for developers not to know that they can disable foreign key checks and to have some valid, um, approved way to implement it. Then, some uh, performance, uh, you know, more performance features, like parallel query authentication, and, and others. And no SQL features. The vector uh, support for vector databases, vector type uh, was all was highlighted already. And uh, searching in JSON now there is that support for indexing JSON, but it only indexes the like high level keys. And we want to have support for like to be able to search even in nested keys or JSONs. And and that's it. Thank you. Um, yeah, here I would like to say thanks to both communities because uh, you do a great job, Percona and MariaDB. You share the work with us, and we can use it for free. So that's and very important yeah. on our scale. Yeah. And we are happy now to to <coughs> share back what we can do better. Thanks. Thank you very much.